The range of dedicated peripherals for the Xbox version of Microsoft Flight Simulator is very limited at the moment. This is a simulator after all, so the question is, can we get a more authentic and accurate experience using the Xbox Game Controller? Whilst the focus is on the Xbox today, everything we cover equally applies to those using the gamepad on the PC. A warm welcome to the Sim Hanger, my name's Mark and thanks for watching. If you're looking to enhance your flight sim experience further, then check out my Getting Started Guides as well as other configuration videos. Links in the notes below, but for now, let's get started. If you're following along, set yourself up on the runway at any airport. I'm in Vancouver, Canada, at Boundary Bay Airfield. Let's go fly. For our tutorial today, I've chosen one of Microsoft Flight Simulator's default aircraft. It's the Beechcraft Bonanza G36. And I'm in one of the default liveries, Kenmore Air. Although this is a fairly simple aircraft, it has a good flight model. The principles and methods that we'll be demonstrating today will apply to any aircraft that you choose to fly. Before we get in the air, let's see where we can change our configuration and from the main menu choose Options, then Controls Options. At the top the menu bar shows all peripherals currently attached. And although we're focusing on the controller today, you can see I've also got a wireless keyboard and mouse attached. You can of course use the controller to navigate your way around the menus, but I find a mouse and keyboard so much quicker and far less hassle. Mine didn't cost much at all, I think around £19 for the set. When you select a controller from the top menu bar, it's highlighted as is the profile. With a controller selected on the right hand side, let's choose Sensitivities, because that's mainly what we're interested in today. Once selected, it will open up a new menu, and this will display all axes. Note axes and not buttons, and above each axis it will show a response curve. And this is where we adjust how the controller reacts to input. And we'll have a look at this in a little bit more detail a little later on. We haven't changed anything, so everything's still at default. So let's see what sort of control we have of our aircraft at default. We're back in the cockpit and using the left joystick, I'm just going to test the movement. First the ailerons, left and right. You can see that they do snap a little bit and now up and down moving the joystick forward and backwards. We've got quite a lot of simulated movement of the yoke, and also a fair amount of snap, if you like, at the end of the travel. This is not very realistic and could make flying a little bit more difficult. Let's give it a go. Brakes released, and as the engine increases, so will the torque, and it will pull the aircraft to the left. I need to use the rudders, which is the left and right triggers. To hold the aircraft central on the runway, I find them very, very sensitive indeed. Steering on the ground is difficult. We've got enough airspeed, I'm now pulling up. I'm pulling back very gently on the left joystick. But even so, you can see the nose is bobbing somewhat. And bear in mind, I'm a fairly experienced flight simmer. Gear is up. I'm now retracting my flaps and I'm just going to move the joystick left and right and up and down. And we can see, even though I'm only moving small amounts, it's an aggressive amount of movement of the aircraft in the air. This amount of movement is too aggressive and not realistic. In addition to taking off, the other big challenge is to land. And it's especially during landing where you need good control of your aircraft. To test it out, I'm deliberately coming in fast and off-center to see if I can control the approach. I'm finding it difficult to get a small enough adjustment to my yoke and my rudder to control my descent and alignment. We're finally down and now to use my rudder to stay on the runway. From what we've just seen, we can say that the controller is just too sensitive to give us the granular control we need to control the aircraft correctly. So back to our options menu, but we're not going to choose controller options, this time assistance options. And in the menu presented, we're looking for piloting. We choose that and from the list presented, we're looking right at the bottom for assisted controller sensitivity. Let's turn that on. By having it turned on, it's an automated feature within the simulator to turn down the sensitivities of your gamepad controller. 
This may be set to on by default, but check your settings so you can see what your setting is. Note this only applies to the Xbox controller. If you're using a yoke, well you would use the yoke assist option. When assisted controller sensitivity is switched to on, you should note that under your control options, your sensitivities have not changed. They show exactly the same as the default sensitivity setting, so these are hidden within the system. If you're developing your own profile, something we'll be looking at shortly, I would suggest you have it off, as I'm not sure whether this assisted on will overwrite that profile anyway. With the controller assistance on, we're back in the cockpit, and I'm just testing the movement of the yoke. And I seem to have finer control near the center, but if anything, more of a snap at the end of the travel. But I think this has got to be some improvement, but there's only one sure way to test. Let's give it a go. Pushing the throttle forward. As the throttle advances, it will pull to the left, and now trying the rudder to keep me centered on the runway and I am still weaving a little bit, the rudder is still far too sensitive for me. I'm only lightly touching the left and right triggers. Airspeed over 70 knots and I'm now pulling up, and that's much better actually, that's far better controlled. I'm not tending to jump off the runway, it's more of a controlled climb. Gear away, and end of runway, so flaps up as well. And controlling my rate of climb by keeping my nose slightly up but not too much. Now I'm going to test my ailerons with banking left and right. That's much better but I'm not pushing them all the way to the ends of the travel which you would rarely do in an aircraft anyway. Now up and down that feels better as well. Still a little bit too sensitive for me though but as always the best way to check is to do a landing. Once again coming in hard and fast to see whether I've got enough control to align with the runway and control my rate of descent. My flaps are fully down and of course my gear is down as well. Airspeed now starting to drop away and I'm using little inputs of my rudder to help me align as well as banking. A little bit of nose up and we're down. Not a perfect landing but it was certainly better. But still trouble controlling her on the ground, it's far too sensitive still. So it's an improvement, but not where I want to be, so time to create our own profile. Before we do that, here's a very quick tip which may be of help to you. You know by now, to look around the cockpit, you use the right joystick. Moving it up and down, left and right, changes your view. Press the joystick and it centers your view. But if you hold down the right hand button and now move the joystick, it will change your position within the aircraft. This is a great way to get a look around the cockpit and the passenger area. Note, not all aircraft will allow you to do this. Press down on the top of the joystick and it recenters your view. Let's get a better understanding of the sensitivity settings and what they mean. Making sure our controller is on default, let's go and hit the sensitivities. These are the default settings that will display whether assist is on or off. Whilst not a prerequisite, I do recommend that assist is off when creating your own profile. By moving the slider against the various settings will change the shape of the response curve above. And this will affect how your aircraft responds to input from your Xbox controller. Let me explain. The response curves are divided into two regions, positive and negative. And each region has an X and a Y axis. The X axis shows you the amount of physical travel of your peripheral, or in this case, the Xbox joystick. There are five squares, so each square we could say is 20%. The Y axis also has five squares and is the amount of input into the SIM. So if you look here at the LT axis, the left trigger axis, for example, it's linear. So for every 20% of movement physically of the joystick, you're getting 20% movement in the sim. In other words, the yoke has moved through 20% of its axis. As we change the values on the slider bars, so the graph will represent that change. So using the left side joystick and the Y axis, as I increase the sensitivity, so you can see the graph is changing. 
Moving it into positive makes it more sensitive. Moving it into negative makes it less sensitive. I've now left it at minus 60%. So in this case, when I move the y-axis to the left, I'm going to have to move it 60% along the axis to get 20% or one box input into the sim. Adjusting the sensitivity plus box would have the same effect, which is effectively moving the joystick to the right. The dead zone applies to the center of the peripheral, or in this case, the Xbox joysticks, and is designed to define an area where, although the joystick will move, no input into the sim will be given. Very useful if you've got a bit of chattering on your joystick, so you're not getting false input into the sim. The size of the dead zone can be altered, by moving the slider as indicated. The Xbox controller doesn't always return exactly to center, so having a dead zone is a good idea, and around 15% is just about right. The neutral slider bar is really for damaged peripherals, or in some special cases a bespoke peripheral, and it changes the center point or the neutral point for the particular controller. If your controller is working well, this is something you don't have to worry about. The extremity dead zone is an interesting and often useful adjustment. And in simple terms, what it does is change the amount of input into the sim. So if I was to move it all the way up to 100%, there would be no input to the sim from the peripheral movement. So as an example, if I was to move it to something around the 50% mark, this would mean a 100% movement of the physical joystick will only give me 50% movement in the sim. This can be used in conjunction with sensitivities to give you finite control. The reactivity slider bar changes the way physical input is interpreted into the sim, and the speed and accuracy to which it imitates and reacts to the response curve. For most settings, these will be left at 100%. The default profile cannot be overwritten, so if you've made any changes on exiting, it will ask you to give that profile another name. You can use a suggested name or make up one yourself. In this case, I'll accept the name, click OK, and I now have a new profile, and you'll see that that's indicated now under the highlighted controller. Apply and save, and that will become the active profile. If you have multiple profiles, click the arrows left or right to change profile, and then apply and save to change the active profile. Let's have a quick look at a general profile that I have created and what settings I've used for my sensitivity settings. This is a general profile and bear in mind you may need to set up different profiles for different types of aircraft. An airliner has very different characteristics to a GA aircraft. For my x-axis for nose up and nose down, I've got sensitivity at minus 70%, dead zone at 14%, an extremity dead zone at 15%. My y-axis is exactly the same, the only difference being that sensitivity is at minus 60%. The major change here is I've introduced the extremity dead zone to help reduce the amount of input at the end of the axis travel. For my left and right triggers, which is my rudder, you remember how sensitive it was. I've now made that minus 60% and a fairly large extremity dead zone of 20%. I've used this combination as just turning down sensitivity alone can eventually make the control sloppy. And that's not always desirable or realistic. Again, to highlight that the right settings for you depends on the aircraft that you're flying. If you're flying a fighter jet, well, you probably don't want this degree of sensitivity. You want it a bit twitchy. If you're flying a big airliner, you may want to turn those sensitivities down a bit. So let's jump back into our Beechcraft Bonanza and see what these changes have done. First of all, let's test the yoke and we'll start with moving it up and down. That seems fairly smooth. I'm not getting any snapping. For my ailerons banking left and right, I can get small amounts of movement, which is what I want. And I've still got a good amount of travel to bank hard if I need to. I can just check my rudders quickly to see whether I've got small amounts of movement. And I have. That looks good. But I can still do a fairly tight turn. Let's have a quick look from the outside. First of all, I'll test my ailerons, move my left joystick, left and right. Despite the extremity dead zone applied, I'm still getting a good amount of movement. 
and I'm also getting some fine small movements. Now for moving my joystick up and down, I'll test the elevators. Getting a good amount of movement again, that looks all okay. And finally it's time to test the rudder and make sure that that's working. That all looks good, so the only way to test is to take a flight, so let's do that. I'm on the runway and I've applied just a little bit of power. I just want to test my rudders and see how fine my control is. I'm going to weave a little bit left and right and see if I can get small movements. And that feels pretty good. Now applying full power and want to stay central on the runway. Need to apply a little bit of right rudder to compensate for the torque. Now I'm just going to touch my rudders left and right and see what sort of reaction I get. Yes, it's reacting, but it's not too aggressive. 70 knots and time for rotation. I lift off, that's fairly smooth. And a slight bank to the right just to stay aligned with the runway. Gear and flaps now up. And I want to maintain a gentle nose up as I continue my climb. Whilst my settings may not be absolutely perfect, it's certainly giving me much better control. Now time to test the controls a little bit more aggressively. Firstly with the rudder, hard over on left and right, and now hard bank right and then left. That's more representative of what I would expect this aircraft to do. Well the proof of the pudding's really in the landing they say, so let's give that a go. Coming in a little bit fast, still 100 knots, but now starting to lose some airspeed. Gears down and flaps are down. Small inputs into my controls to align me with the runway. I've come in a little bit low, so I need to hold the nose up and just get onto the runway. Last minute adjustments to align myself correctly. And we got touchdown. Well that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope that you found it useful and helpful and will give you a better understanding of the sensitivity settings and configuring your Xbox game controller for use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thank you very much for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon and bye for now.